Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to be able to write a little baby script so that I can get the value, the input, from a text box. So, previous video, we just really quickly made a text box, which is just using a label and, of course, the good old-fashioned, where's my editor? There it is, input type text. I, it does have an ID. I played around with placeholder just to see how that worked, and, of course, we got the max length attribute in there. But, what I want... Um, students in intro to javascript to be able to do is obviously easily make a text box input control but also to be able to get the value from the user and then do something with it and what we're going to do is going to be pretty simple we're going to get the value of this text box that the user provides and we're just going to display it in a paragraph off to the side in anticipation of that we do need to be able to invoke our function call a function trigger the function and we're going to do that with a button click so after my um, text box here, I'm going to do input type equals, let's do button. That seems pretty good. And I'm going to put a value that just says, click me. That's all it takes. And that's going to give me a button right on there. Now this button has already been styled did, um, a couple videos back. Uh, otherwise, I'm just styling anything that's an input type button so that it has those colors and that hover effect and stuff like that. You'll notice the labeling for the button is created with the value attribute. And in JavaScript, that would be the value property for this particular element. Because I want this button to trigger or invoke a function, let me go ahead and give it an ID. I'm just going to call it button one just to be kind of generic. And remember, the order of the attributes in an element doesn't matter. So as long as they're all in that tag. OK, so that's going to be my button. But I also need a place for my paragraph to go. I'm going to do paragraph class equals output and then ID equals output one. And there's my paragraph. And again, I've already styled it so that my paragraph box is going to show up off to the right. That's just CSS stuff there. So now, when somebody types something inside of the text box and hits the button, I want that text to show up over there in the paragraph. So that's going to be pretty easy. To make things neat and organized and simple, I'm going to put my scripts right down here in the lower portion of the body of the page. And I will start off by declaring a few variables. Let's see. My first variable, I'm going to use the const keyword. My first variable is going to be for, yeah, maybe that just I'll go in order here, the text box itself. So I'm just going to put in text1 is going to be my variable for text box1 in case we do more. And that's going to be equal to document.get element by ID. And then my ID for that is what? TB user. Oops, I need to put some, I'll use single quotes for that. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do there. I'm also going to do a constant variable for my button. And I'll call that um, btn1. Again, document.get element by ID. And then the, my button ID is btn1. So on my document object, I'm looking for an element that has that ID, and I'm just finding it by its ID. Pretty common, efficient way to go. And um, let's see. Let's do another one here for my output. Constant, I'll say uh, out1, document.get element by ID. And this is output1. Cool. So I've got those constants in there. Now I'm actually going to create a function. The name of my function is simply going to be um, fun1. I'm going to do an empty set of parentheses, parentheses because this function is not going to have any parameters. No need to do that and try that out later on where we can pass arguments to a function. But um, yeah, so function1, and it's not going to do a lot of exciting stuff, by the way. It's going to simply t uh, go to my output paragraph, which is out one, that's my output paragraph, dot enter HTML. So my object is my paragraph, and enter HTML is a property of that paragraph. Enter HTML means it's going to look at the contents in between the opening and closing tags, in this case, the paragraph tag. And I want that enter HTML to be equal to my. Um, text box one dot value. So value is a property of my text box object. And there's a few other values too, but that's one that we would use quite a bit in order to get that value. By the way, if I actually had a value attribute show up in my text box, which is pretty rare, 
But if I put a value attribute in there, I'd have some text display in that text box. That's different than the placeholder, by the way. The placeholder is temporary and disappears once the user starts to enter a value. But I don't want to use a value in the actual input element. I want the user, the web visitor, to, dis uh, to supply the value. I think that's pretty good. So now we just need to uh, put in an event handler. Um, now my button already has a, uh, a variable representing it. So I can do btn1.addEventListener. When the user clicks this button, I want to call my fun1 function. There it is. That's all I need to do there. So basically, when the user clicks my button, it's going to call my fun1 function. And there it is. My fun1 function is simply going to take the value of the text box and put that into the inner HTML of my output paragraph. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's see what's going on here. So here it is. Now I do have my console open using my Edge browser. Let me just refresh just in case. I don't think I need to because I'm auto-saving, live server, all that jazz. Uh, actually, let's click, see if anything happens. Nothing happens. Let's type in my name in the text box and then click. And there we go. And that input is displaying right over there in our output. So input from the user, and then we invoke a function which grabs that value from the input and does something with it. In this case, it's just displaying it in a paragraph. But that is a good, simple little script you can write after you start experimenting with some form input. So I think in another video, we're going to play around with a few other inputs, and then we'll also attach some baby scripts to those. Take care.